based on a RESTful interface in the sense that the light bulb will expose itself as a URI, <coughs> expose, it like, uh, expose itself as a slash light, for example. And that's how it's discovered by the other device using COA. So just to give a brief overview about how it looks like, uh, so you have a light bulb, here it exposes as a resource, and it has an attributes in it it can have. And for each resource, what it has, it has uh, access control policy defined for it. And on the other hand, it has a client which is uh, uh, which tries to discover this resource. And based on the permission it has, 
and uh, server will respond back to it. So there is a distinction over here between the client and the server. Server is more of a constrained device where it will have a very limited functionality while the client is more of a rich device from which the communication actually happens. So, uh, so how it looks like, it's divided into small and uh, big device kind of a thing uh, where the light device is having only the base layer. So I'm not going to go into the details about all of the layers, but I'm just going to concentrate on the security uh, part of the architecture, which includes the DTLS. And uh, for DTLS is a data ground transfer layer security, which runs on top of CoAP. CoAP runs over UDP, so DTLS is a version of uh, TLS that's designed to run over UDP. It also includes the SRM, which is just uh, basically a uh, place to store securely all the credential information. So, as I said, the security is revolving around resources. So it tries to secure, for example, uh, when you consider it in the form of a light bulb, for example, here you have to just consider trying to secure it as a resource, A slash light. So in terms of the software, it's going to secure it on that terms. To do that, it has three different steps what it follows. The first step is basically an authentication. And for authentication, a step that happened before that, that's onboarding. Uh, after the device is onboarded, it, the, each device gets a particular set of keys, which is a pre-shared key or it could be a certificate. And that is used for the authentication purpose as well as to establish the secure channel as the communication happened each time. It also has access control policies in place so that uh, you might uh, make your, for example, your TV or your mobile phone both have an access to the light, but you would like to only turn, switch on or off your light via mobile phone or via TV. So you can set a different access policies for each device. So the basic step is onboarding and provisioning, and I'll be describing that more in detail. <laughs> So before going in onboarding, I want to uh, make clear what the device security, why we need onboarding. So the uh, provisioning is all about uh, So provisioning is about uh, having a different set of devices which are there in your house. Uh, like, for example, here we have a mobile phone uh, communicating with the TV and a router, but it's not communicating with the light. So we are restricting the devices that it can communicate with, as well as it also implies that the devices that are to be communicated, you're defining which can communicate with each other. Uh, so if you have, for example, if you have a neighbor, you will not have access to the light, but we want to ensure that, and that's why it's all about device security. <coughs> So why we need it, so COVAS is uh, uh, quite famous for making uh, non-web vulnerabilities. So they have defined for IoT also, and they have defined uh, they have defined 10 IoT vulnerabilities. The five related to device are, most devices currently have like, for example, a USB port where you can plug it and get all the debug information. So there is no hardware hardening that's implied on the current set of devices which are there. As well as, uh, the, in terms of the software, the interfaces, the configuration, that's not securely done. At the moment, it is exposed. Anybody has an access to it. As well as the firmware can be updated by anyone. So there is no proper security mechanism before the firmware is updated. So that's the reason uh, we have defined an onboarding mechanism. Onboarding mechanism is a way to ensure that to make the device as part of your network. So you can imagine getting a light bulb in your house. And once you get the uh, bulb in your house, you want to ensure uh, that you get the network information what you have, like your Wi-Fi credentials which you have in your house. You want to give the details about that. But as well as you want to give which kind of a key that you will be only communicating with. So this is a very isolated communication that happens. So you can imagine the bulb not having any information, for example, about your Wi-Fi access code. So you can just have a QR code, scan it, get the details about, uh, for example, if it has a Wi-Fi code, it uh, the credential SSID and the password. You make an onboarding tool, which could be on a mobile phone, could be on a router, and you make a one-to-one -one communication. This one-to-one -one communication is based on three protocols that are defined. 
uh, just work random pin and certificate. So they are kind of uh, lower down the security, but uh, the onboarding process gives two uh, things which are very important for these communication that happens next. So first thing it gives is a pre-shared key or certificate, and the second thing it gives is a device ID, which is the ID which is used for the communication that both then identify each other using that ID. So that are the two things that gives uh, that are uh, as a result of onboarding. So to describe a bit about how just work works, just work is not uh, considered to be secure, but you can consider it for an example like this light bulb that I've been using. You need for a light bulb, you don't have a display, you can't enter any credentials, so as soon as you bring it, you have to establish some communication mechanism to give a key to the device. This is based on uh, everything, as I said, is based on a resource, so we are trying to check a resource, which is DUXM here, which stands for device ownership. As after checking for device ownership, basically we set the just work and make a detailed escalation <coughs> using anonymous cipher and push the key from the onboarding pool to the device. So uh, just to make sure that here the communication is initiated by the user. So onboarding pool has to be started by the user. It doesn't happen automatically. So that is a user in, uh, interaction happening. So. Uh, if you bring a device in your house, you cannot think that the hacker might attack it and get, uh, make the device as part of this. But if, if he makes it, then the, the state will not, the resource state will not be the same, it will be changed. As well as uh, you cannot make it part of your network. So this is expected that it's an isolated communication which happens only one time when you bring your device and it's pretty fresh and it doesn't have any network permission information. There is another mechanism which is more comparatively secure than the just work, which is random pin. In random pin, both the ends basically enter some kind of a pin, which is a random pin generated on the onboarding tool, entered at both the ends, and they make use of DBKDF to generate the key, and using that key, they make a DTLS connection. It's comparatively secure than just work, uh, but uh, the same onboarding tool has to be started from the user to make this happen. There is a third way of doing ownership transfer, which is asymmetric. Here, the, it has more complex model because you need a certificate signed by some authority. The certificate has to go both in the devices, so it has to go in the onboarding tool as well as the device that you bring. So, for example, light bulb needs to have that uh, certificate in place. Onboarding tool needs to have the certificate in place, signed by the same authority. And then, when you bring the device in, you start it. The connection is established. The detail is is established is using that certificate signed by the same authority. And when the connection is established, onboarding tool pushes a new certificate which is uh, which is for that particular environment signed by that onboarding tool to the device. So onboarding tool here is playing a very important role because that's where your device has become part of your network. It's not expected to be running on all the devices. It could be on a mobile phone. It could be on a router. More secure is router because if you lose your phone or something, then you lose your onboarding tool, which is your main source. So it's expected the deployment model to be more of a gateway device, which has this information. But for example, and for the purpose, it's kind of things part of an application running on a mobile phone, which is store secure. So going more in after the onboarding is done. So onboarding, as I explained, gives you a key and a UID. So once we have that, next step is provisioning, which is a light bulb getting information about a TV because we have a pre-shared key that's been generated here. We need a way of getting the information about all the other devices in the house. So provisioning helps us to get that information to the, for example, to the TV, information to the light bulb so that they can make a, a connection, with a secure connection. So what it does is uh, now when the onboarding tool has given you a key, you make a new DTLS connection with the on uh, with the provisioning server, which is a bootstrap server we call. And once we uh, make a connection, uh, it pushes, it checks the state, what the particular state of the PSTAT is. It see, if it sees that it's not provisioned at the moment, uh, it basically tries to push all the information about all the other devices which are there in the user network to the a new device so that it can communicate but at the same time uh, okay. but at the same time if the information is uh, 
uh, if the new device gets added to the network, it sees the commit hash value over there to decide uh, whether it needs any update. <coughs> there is a hardware hardening also specified, which is not uh, which is not implemented, but more of uh, guidelines for the hardware to make sure that the secure storage and all the information are securely stored onto the device. So it specify how the random generator should be or other details to ensure that the randomness or the secure storage is properly run in the device. So in terms of connectivity, uh, I have to speed up because I have five minutes left. Uh, so local and remote connectivity implies that there is a connection that is established between the devices in the house as well as there is a possibility of making a communication outside. So to handle that, um, why we need it is because of the less encryption and uh, as I specified earlier, and the, there is a less authentication or authorization between the devices. So the secure connectivity is done using DTLS, uh, where the connectivity stack is actually communicating with tiny DTLS library to get all the uh, details, but connectivity holds all the secure credential information inside the devices. And when they are trying to communicate with each other, both the end verify each other using the device ID, which was generated as part of onboarding. They encrypted at both the ends to verify each other. So for remote connectivity, it makes use of an XMPP, where it's not expected that all the devices will communicate remotely. It's only expected that the gateway device, which is at the is the only one that communicate, and they communicated using the uh, GDIDs for each device. But they make use of in-band byte stream to establish a DTLS connection between the device and so the, the onboarded keys that we have are still required for a device which is outside the house also to communicate with the gateway, for example, here, needs to have that key to communicate. So there is an in-band byte stream with the DTLS established internally on top of it. So apart from that, it also has a privacy uh, where it basically just tries to imply that the, you can basically segregate the two different areas in your room, in your house, and respect which who has permission to what. So each resource has access control entries for them, which is basically who has the permission to read or write. The access control policy could be, for example, all the policies could be there on the light bulb, but you can imagine it's quite constrained, so it can have an uh, extra server, which is access manager server, which makes sure of keeping the access policy on it. It can be defined as as per group, per access, per resource. So you can make it fine grain as you want. So we be more clear from this example. So if you, for example, you have want to turn the light on, you can make a permission to it. And if it sees that you have a read permission, it will give you a response back to server. But if you're trying to change the state of it, if you don't have permission, uh, just have permission to read, it will reject your permission. So you could make a connection with the device, but you can't change the state of it because of the access from the policy not in place. The remote access control is exactly the same, but it, you just have another server where all the requests go. It could create a bottleneck, but it's also useful for a small group of centers. So to conclude, uh, I assure you about the different OWAS security uh, issues which are there. There are some solution I actually provide. There are still a few left for the uh, firmware update. That uh, is not currently implemented because small device doesn't have uh, access to the remote uh, device directly. So it has to go via gateway. So it's not currently there. But other issues like physical security or interfaces, using a combination of different techniques to try to provide a secure mechanism.
So you're not only like being attacked by your neighbor, you're being attacked by the whole internet. So I'm, I'm just surprised that that was what happened. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Give a warm hand to our people. Thank you. 